Uh, so we'll get started. This is worksheet four for my Latin eights. Okay. So this worksheet covers the kind of sentence structures that we've been talking about with the verbs sum and possum. So just friendly reminder how they work. Really, if you think about sum has its own structure, possum has its. Okay. So the first one, the predicate nominative, this is where we're dealing with just sum, right? So if the verb is some form of sum, right? you're often gonna have a sentence that follows a particular pattern. The subject, which will be in the nominative case, is, or are, or was, or were, and then you're gonna have another word in the nominative case, okay? And that word is what we call a predicate nominative because it's technically after the verb in English, right? So if you say the man is a poet, poet is your predicate nominative because it's describing the man, in this case, describing his profession or something like laiti sumus, we are happy, right? Happy is describing us, right? We are the subject, which means any word describing us also needs to be in the nominative case. So simple sentences like this, this is what we're starting with, okay? Um, complementary infinitives, this is what we'd use uh, when we use the verb possum. So as I said in class, possum doesn't like to travel alone. You don't just like to be able you like to be able to do something. So we're always looking for those infinitives, that E-R-E, A-R-E, I-R-E kind of a form, okay? And we call it complementary because it finishes off the meaning of possum, okay? So magister bene docere potest, the teacher is able, magister potest, the teacher is able, docere, that's the thing that he's able to do. He's able to teach bene, well, and then nunc discere possumus, now we, possumus, we are able, discere, to learn. So you're always going to see with potest, you're going to see ambulare, you're going to see clamare, you're going to see facere, you're going to say dicere, ducere, some infinitive verb. And typically, the possum is going to go at the end, the infinitive is going to go right in front of it. Okay? Just make sure I'm still recording. I had an issue in my last class, so it looks like we're still good. Okay. All right, so each one of these sentences is going to have either a, a sum or a possum. Okay, that's the, that's the name of the game on this worksheet. Okay. So, pugna longa erat, my verb is erat, so we're going to have one of these predicate nominative situations. Pugna is the noun, that's not the verb. Pugna is the noun, so the fight, erat, the fight was, and then my predicate describing it, the fight was long. Okay, simple sentence. The fight was long, long was the fight. You could actually go both ways in English. Um, nostri amici agricolae sunt. So nostri, the adjective nostri, that's the word for our, O-U-R, our amici, our friends, sunt, our friends are, and then the predicate nominative, agricolae, our friends are farmers. Typically the verb goes at the end, but you could easily see nostri amici sunt agricolae. You could see it both ways. Nautai videre, so I'm seeing an infinitive, so my ears are perking up already, non poterant. So this is going to be one of those complementary infinitive situations. My subject is up here, nautai, the sailors, okay? My verb is at the end, non poterant, so with the known in front of it, they were not able. And then my infinitive videre to see. So when you're translating, you've got the subject at the beginning, nautai, the sailors. How do I know that it's were not able? I'm always looking at that form of sum that's inside of posum. So when I see poterant, what I see is errant, which is were. The P-O-T on the front makes it they were able. Okay. Now it's I we data non poterant, the sailors were not able, and then my infinitive to see. Weary piratai erunt. So erunt is my future tense. So the men erunt will be piratai. The men 
will be pirates. We've got a couple people in the chat. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, to pop in. Let me know. Uh, meus filius, clamare potest. So my subject here at the beginning in the nominative case, meus filius, my son, Oops. potest, is able, again, est, is able, clamare, to shout in the infinitive. I think I can zoom in on this a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Now, number six gives us an interesting, you know, situation where we have a, a few different ways. Ferrum is iron. It is the substance that is iron. It can also be a tool. It can also be a sword. It has a lot of different meanings. So we're just going to go with sword here. Um, we'll use the figurative meaning here. Ferrum tuum erit. So you could say the sword will be tuum, it will be yours, or you could say it will be your sword, that would work too, okay? Uh, either one works, and sometimes you're going to have that situation where there are a couple different possibilities. The sword will be yours, it will be your sword, that's pretty much it. Uh, number seven here, we've got equistare, stare posunt, stare is to stand in Latin. So my subject up here, equi, my mouse would cooperate, equi, the horses, okay, posunt at the end, posunt, are able, stare, to stand. Equi is plural. Okay, they, right, the horses would qualify as they, so they are able to stand. Equi posunt stare. Stare posunt. Primi sumus. Oh, baby, Latin school. We are first. Okay, you're probably used to hearing it as sumus primi, which is totally acceptable. Primi sumus, uh, you could see either one. Now, I got a couple people who asked me about 9 and 10, right, where I said translate the following sentences into English, okay? I guess I could have just said translate the following sentences, but then I would have gotten some people who would have done it in different languages. So then I would have had to specify translate the following sentences from English to Latin or from Latin to English. To pen and I just hope that you guys in these situations, you will see something like, oh, number 9, they're already in English. So what do we think he wants us to do? If I had to guess, he would want us to translate those into Latin, okay? So we are able to move, okay? We are able, posumus, right? We are, sumus, we are able, posumus. That's probably going to go at the end. It's okay if you don't put it at the end. And then to move, I need one of those infinitives. So moere, moere, posumus or possumus moere, either way. And then number 10, Sicily is a large island. Please know that the word Sicily, the name Sicily, is an English word. In Latin, it is not called Sicily. In Latin, the word is Sicilia. Okay. So in Latin, when we talk about Sicily, we say Sicilia which is still the name of the island to this day in Italian. It's just pronounced a little different. It's not Sicilia, it's Sicilia. And if you're from Sicily, you probably say Sicilia because they have a weird accent. I won't say weird because my family has it too. But uh, Sicilia is, Sicily is a large island. So Sicilia est, large island. An island is an insula, an insula magna. Sicilia est insula magna, or Sicilia magna insula est, or insula magna est. The words can go in many different orders. Okay? How are we doing on time? We're good. Quiet day. I think you guys are in extended homeroom right now, so I'm actually very glad that not many people are here. Okay? Or are we in lunchtime? I have no idea. No, it's lunchtime. Okay, you guys enjoy your lunch. 
Uh, grammatical constructions identify if the sentence contains a predicate nominative, a complementary infinitive, or neither one. Okay. So really just making sure that we understand how this stuff works in English. The woman's son will be able to do many things. So I'm looking for a verb to be or a verb to be able. So the woman's son will be able to do many things. So this is a complementary infinitive. The idea here is that I've got a verb to be able, so that's going to hang out with a complementary infinitive. The speaker has said many different words. I'm not seeing uh, a verb is, and I'm not seeing a verb is able. So this sentence has neither one. So there would be no predicate nominative and no complementary infinitive in that one. Is your friend a doctor? Is your friend a doctor? Your friend is a doctor? Question mark. So this would be a predicate nominative, right? Because we have our subject, your friend, and we're describing him as a doctor. Is your friend a doctor? I want to know if your friend and doctor are the same person, okay? We are able to do anything. So I see a verb uh, being able. I see to do. This would be a complementary infinitive. I can spell. Okay. And this last one was tricky, 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 and I did this on purpose. She was running for five hours. This, she was running, this is different than just she was, right? If I had said something like she was happy, then sure, you could have a predicate nominative. But your verb here is she was running. So this was is a helping verb. It's not the verb of the sentence. It's not the main verb. So there is no predicate nominative and there is no complementary infinitive. So this sentence has neither one, okay? Because when you say she was running, you are not saying that she is equivalent to the action that is running, right? You're saying that she runs or she ran, right? Not that she was the physical embodiment of the action that is running. Okay? So there's no predicate nominative here. If you wanted to say this in Latin, for those of you who are at that stage, you would say, uh, Cureba. Oops. Get my long marks going here. She was running is just kureba. She was running. And then for five hours, you would say quinque horas. But there'd be no, there'd be no est. There'd be no erat. There'd be no form of sum in that sentence. Okay. All right. And then, of course, a little bit of declension practice to make sure that we are ready to go on that. So... Filius, filii, this is a second declension word, so fili, it is second declension, and I'll let you guys do the work here, but filius, filii, filio, filium, filio. You guys can pause the video here if you want to do it on your own and then check your work. Okay. Filii, filiorum. I keep forgetting the long mark at the beginning of the word. My apologies. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, filiis, filios, and oops, filiis. Filiis. Okay. Whoop. I think these bolds are a little bit easier to see. Poena. This is poena poenai. So first declension, my stem would be poen. Easy money on the first declension noun. So we have poena, poenai. Those are the first two forms. Never get those wrong. Poenai, poenam, 
Poena. Poenae. Poenarum. Oops. Poenis. Poenas. And poenis. And that's your word for punishment. It's where we get the word poenalty. Okay, except instead of spelling it poenalty, it just became penalty. Donum doni neuter. That is a gift, and it is second declension. It's second neuter. And anytime we're dealing with neuter nouns, be on alert. Okay? And they're always different in the same places, right? The nominative and the accusative are always the same, donum and donum. And the plurals of those forms end in A, dona and dona. Hey, James. Uh, doni, dono, and dono to finish off the singulars. Oh, my mouse is giving me guff. Donorum, donis, and donis. Okay. So always be on the lookout when you have a neuter noun for those forms that are a little bit different than you would expect. Okay. Oculus, oculi. This is regular old second declension. We get the stem, oculi. We chop off the eye. We get ocul. Okay. Uh, this is, like I said, second declension. So no tricks here. Just knowing your forms. So we would have oculus, oculi, oculo, oculum, oculo. And the plural, standard second declension, oculi, oculorum, oculis. Oculos, Oculis. This might be a new word for you guys. Lanista, lanistae, masculine. This is a trainer. This is somebody who would train gladiators or other competitors. The stem would be lanist, right? From lanistae. It is first declension, okay? It doesn't matter that it's masculine. It is a first declension noun. Look at that genitive, okay? So it's another one of those rare, but perfectly valid, first declension masculine, okay? So when you decline it, oh, let me get my bold on, okay? Lanista, lanistae, lanistae, lanistam, lanista. And in the plural, lanistae, Lanistarum, Lanistis, Lanistas, Lanistis. Okay? It's going to decline just like Puella. Just happens to be masculine. Ah, I, I, am, ah, I, arm, is, as, is. And that brings us to, whoops, I don't know why that long mark disappeared. It must be an English word. Yeah, it must have Oakley in there as an English word. And then the last one is arma armorum, which is neuter, but it is a noun that is always plural, okay? And you have certain nouns. Let's try that again. There we go. You have certain nouns in the language that are just always plural, okay? So when you're getting the stem from this, you got to be careful because the ending is orum. So the stem of this word is arm, right? You have to chop off the ending from the genitive, even if that ending is plural. So we have a second declension word. It is a neuter word, okay? So we're going to have arma, armorum, armorum, armis, since it's neuter, arma, and then armis. That word does not have singular forms. It only has plural forms, okay? So a reminder of the three things I'm gonna be asking you to do on the quiz. If I see you Thursday, it's Thursday. If I see you Friday, it's Friday. If you are given a noun, can you tell me what declension that noun is? First, second, third, fourth, or fifth, okay? 
If you're given a first or second declension noun, can you decline it? Can you put it in a particular form that is asked of you? Okay, take lanista and make it accusative plural. Take oculus and make it dative singular. Can you do that? Okay, and the third is if you're given an English sentence, can you give me the form of sum or possum that would be needed for that sentence in Latin? So if I gave you the students are happy, you would give me sunt. If it was the students are able to do their work, you would give me posunt. Okay? We were at my friend's house, eramus. We were able to see our friends, poteramus. Okay, so you're thinking about who the subject is um, and showing me that you know your forms. Okay? All right, short one today. It's going to be about 20 minutes when I cut it down, so... Uh, woohoo. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys later.